Danny Rick, I there's, you know, you oh. you saw the broadcast in a minute. You saw the broadcasters almost actually like break down when they when Danny Rick was given his interview because it was so sad, and I thought that he was done a disservice because I wanted to see him get in and do a donut, and I wanted to see the fans give him a, a good goodbye. I wanted to see them all line up where he's walking and you know congratulate him for all he's done for Red Bull and the Red Bull family. This is a man who has eight race victories. This is a man who, if it wasn't for, remember he beat Max Verstappen two out of the three years he was there. Remember he beat Sebastian Vettel in his last year. Well, not in his last year, but he did beat Sebastian Vettel head, heads up. And if it wasn't, if, if it wasn't for the Mercedes dominance, he could have come away with two racing titles. It, it, it's a possibility, but i He's one of the most likable drivers I've ever seen. He's always smiling. He's always happy. There's a, a sense of just happiness and radiance that comes from being around him. You just feel good. You know, he's feeling good. You're feeling good. He, he's the guy you want to go to the bar with. He's the guy you want to go play tennis with. He's the guy you want as your friend. And I thought that how they ushered him out was shameful. Yeah, well, look, I, I love... Everyone loves Danny Rick. I mean, heck, heck, the racing helmet that I use that you featured on the show a, a couple of weeks ago is a JMD design helmet. That's Danny's racing designer, and it was modeled the base design on his electric blue and silver Vegas helmet last year. Except mine is red, chrome, and black. And uh, sure enough, his last racing helmet looks very much like my current racing helmet. It just has red flakes instead of red chrome. I love Danny Rick. Everyone loves Danny Rick. Look, let's talk turkey. Okay. Danny Rick has won eight races, more than only four drivers on the grid have won more races than Danny Rick has won. That's it. Only for the other 15, no. He was a great racing driver. Um, age affects us all differently, and driver's performance drops at different rates. Fernando is still driving like a top driver at age 42 or 43. Danny isn't. It sucks. It's unfair. I wish he were. We all wish he were, but he's not. So I had no problem on a merit basis with Red Bull exiting him and giving Liam Lawson a chance. But that's where it stops. Why they wouldn't give somebody who has done so much for the sport and so much for the team a dignified, proper public exit is a scandal and it's a stain on the way Red Bull runs that team. Red Bull literally... Everything Red Bull can do wrong in PR, it does wrong. <laughs> it does. Rick, and it it's the worst. All yeah. Red Bull had to do was make a public announcement before Singapore. This will be Danny Rick's last race. We're bringing in Liam Lawson. We hate doing it, but on a performance basis only, we have no choice. Yes. Um, and people would understand it and respect it because it's the right decision from a racing standpoint. And that would have given Red Bull an opportunity, frankly, to do a great PR thing, have a driver's, you know, honor walk to say goodbye, have yes. donuts, uh, have him do donuts and have Lewis and, and Charles and Fernando do donuts on the track, have a public announcement, have him make a speech, make, yes. a, make a sad event into a great event and a chance yes. to honor the wonderful career that Daniel Ricardo has had in Formula One. And instead, Daniel Ricardo slinked off at 1.46 local time alone in an empty paddock with Kim Illman, who I really like here, giving him a hug goodbye and taking a photograph because he was the only person left to say goodbye. Wow. Ridiculous, scandalous, That's and wrong. And Christian... You should be ashamed of yourself. Shame on you. Yeah. I mean, that's what I think. That, I mean, you, man, you laid it out. You put it the way it should be put. I mean, this guy deserved more. Yeah. He didn't deserve what he got. He didn't deserve to go out that way. And, you know, it's hard to root for Red Bull. I root, I'm rooting for Max now because I, I just don't like I don't like it when big brother or big corporations pick on 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 people. So I'm I'm a, I'm a Max fan just because of that. But I I mean 
I, I can't root for Red Bull. I can't. I'm more a fan of drivers than of teams, maybe because I drive a little bit myself. And as I've gotten older, like I like Ferrari, uh, but Ferrari is more a culture than anything else. I, yeah, I, totally. I, but I'm more a fan of drivers than of teams. Like I've got, I've come to like Max as I've got grown more and more respectful of his ability. Uh, you know, I, I, I love Lewis. I, I like Charles. I, I like a lot of drivers. Teams, they come and go. Ferrari's an institution. Most teams are a little more fungible to me. Um, but I like I like drivers and you know, they change teams. But like I said, Danny Rick, I don't dis I don't hate any team. I've been to Red Bull. I was their paddock club guest this year at Montreal. But they should have done better by Danny Rick because you Danny know what they could do? And I hope that they rectify this by maybe having a day where they come out like remember when like in football when football players retire they just have a press conference just for that when they retire you know at, at the end of the season and i hope they do something like that they have a press conference maybe in australia with daddy rick maybe they fly out uh sebastian vettel and you know they they have a press conference for him and then he, they'll have a car out there and he can maybe do some donuts or, or do something the some type of season you're right first race of next season they do something like that. They have a driver on and walk. They do some donuts. They they let them make I'll a speech. Do something because they really got to fix it up. Because you laid it out on the line, it's it's a stain on there.